So on with the Rita. The scales are quite thick. I want to peel them back to roughly where that line is on each side. Um, this side needs some more work. So I've got my coal burn. And I'm basically going to sit here and whittle away. This isn't really the right wood for scales. This is um, just some crap wood, really, to be honest. It's from uh, an IKEA. Uh, one of them wardrobes that's like pine and uh, thin, crappy, crappiest pine wood you can get your hands on and canvas. But I've never scaled before, so I wanted to make sure I did it with some really soft wood. I've got some old brass nails that I'm going to use for pins, but I mean the two-pack glue that I used on this is, is holding this together immensely well. I actually uh, dropped this down the stairs or threw it down the stairs to try and work out whether the glue's going to hold well enough and neither of the scales come off. So. I'm guessing it's pretty good. Yeah. You see the action I'm using, I'm cutting towards my thumb, so any kids see this, don't try cutting towards your thumb until you've practiced it a lot, although really and truthfully, you've got to do it to practice it. It sounds bizarre, I think the correct way to do this is to keep your thumb out of the way, but I would rather keep my thumb in the way, squarely, and concentrate on not moving the blade uh, horizontally, because you can take quite a lot of pressure from a blade before it'll pierce your skin, but just a tiny little bit of movement while you're doing that, and you're going to find yourself in trouble. But, I mean, I'll just sit here for a while, get this to the, the rough shape that I want. And you want to cut it, you don't want to split it. Uh, I probably could split this, but I'm not going to take the chance. So I'll just gently scrape away. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm not really pushing hard. I'm trying to work more of a sore emotion than anything. And I've got some sandpaper here. <laughs> it can end up with bits of wood all over the house, but. I've got some sandpaper here which I shall use afterwards. Doing this end is not so easy because I'm, I've, I've really got nowhere that I can safely put my thumb other than the same position it is at the bottom. So. I mean, as you can see, this wood is, is really quite crap. But for a first go, I thought I'd use some softer wood because the hardwood can be so difficult to work with. I'm no chippy. I'm ex welder. So I know how to deal with metal, but wood's a different story altogether. When you make a mistake and cut something too short with metal, you can just weld another piece on the end, grind it back, and away you go. The work area clean, always as clean as possible. As soon as whatever dirt is coming off is starting to interfere with you. Clean it up. So you can see I'm trying to keep the distance between the blade and my thumb as close as possible. I should probably be wearing leather gloves for doing this, but if I cut myself, if I cut myself and touch wood, which I'm doing already, I'm normally quite lucky with knives. I could do this all with sandpaper, but <laughs> I'd be here till Christmas. So I did 
did this away. I mean, another way to do it is for me to put a clamp on the desk. I don't know if you can see that. It's for me to put a clamp on the desk. I'll show you. Bear with me. So, it makes it a bit more awkward because the clamps are right in the way. But if you put a clamp on the desk here, Basically, hopefully, draw a knife in. But as you can see, it's not so great. This this blade isn't set up to be a draw knife. It's it's got too much of a steep angle on it. So, I mean, it's just another another way we can do these sorts of things. We'll carry off, carry on the way I started. And what I'm going to do now is probably just shut up. I'll video this and then speed it up to three or four times. And uh, if you're really lucky, you'll get to see me cut my thumb open. using it to do what I need it to do. Well, you can see how bad this piece of wood is. Well, you might not be able to see the shadows, but there's two shadows here. Um, if I could find the other piece. What you actually see is when I carve the top off, like that, it's hollow underneath. So you have to take such a small amount off at a time otherwise it pulls the the next layer down of the wood up um, the scales aren't really cut right I didn't pay much attention to the grain I would imagine the grain should be vertically through here to give them strength but this knife is probably never going to get used it'll probably just go on a display stand somewhere once I've finished it and put some nice shiny brass pins in it <laughs> when you just die for that as dry as that when you were out to <coughs> trying to light a fire in the woods on a rainy wet day. One thing I don't own at the moment is a decent rasp, rasp filer. If I did, I wouldn't be using a knife to do this. Uh, right tool for the right job. I don't think a knife is the best thing to use for doing this, but at the minute it's really, really the best I've got. I've got an angle grinder, I suppose I could put a soft pad in that. can see where the wood split off the last couple of times I went down here. Now I've got loads of grooves in it. If you could get that texture even all over, that would probably be quite nice. Uh, something else I've got, which I think is a bit too big for me to make nice scales out of, but we'll have a go at it, and it's not so easy to work, is some pieces of antler. Um, I was considering turning that one into a small hatchet. I've got a handle, 
uh, sorry, an axe head in the cupboard that I could use. And I think that would make quite a nice hatchet handle, even with that bit on the end. Does the wife bring home for dinner? Sausage and mash, pizza, breakfast, roast fish and chips. I'll be having roast for dinner. <laughs> Do bear in mind, my missus works in a 24-7 like shop. It's going to be 10 o'clock at night. Oh, just coming up to 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> so we won't be having dinner till about half 11. But some more to take off each side I think but I need to be really careful now because I don't want to go too far like I say with steel I can just weld another piece on if I cut too much off with wood and it's not so easy to fix when you take too much off might be for you highly experienced joiners out there but for someone with my skills when it comes to working with wood it's not music on. I guess I'll end up with a video that can't be broadcast in the country. But and it's starting to feel a bit better now. The scales need to be really quite thin on a knife like this I think. I've got some work to do with the back edge of the handle. So maybe if we take the front down to where I actually want it. each side. Obviously once this is done I'll be sanding it down further. To get some more shape to it. But I was going to cut it flat where my lines are on each side or at least nearly flat as flat as I dare guy I used to work for always used to tell me there's no such thing as a mistake <coughs> lesson. A lesson will be repeated until it is learned. Another guy I used to work with, not for, used to always tell me there's no such thing as a waste of time. Because even when you think you've wasted your time, you've learned something from it. So how can it honestly be a waste of time if you've learnt something? Right. That's that one down to the pencil line, this top one. All the way around. Gonna do the same on the other side now. The other one's still got three or four mil to come off. I'll take it down on the outside first. And like I say, I'll go over it afterwards with sandpaper.
It is quite disconcerting using this video camera. Well, it's not actually a video camera, it's a, it's a compact camera, so it does video and slow motion, all sorts of stuff. So Casio, get it. But because it hasn't got a screen on the front, you can never really tell whether it's recording or not. There's a light that flashes on top of it, but the light just seems to flash all the time. So it might be recording what I'm doing, but it might be telling me that the battery's gone flat. Going back to the whole knife safety issue, when we all watch videos on YouTube, that's how we get into making videos. Hoping to maybe impair knowledge, or maybe help other people not make mistakes, the same mistakes that we do, or you know, just basically sharing the knowledge that you've got. Whenever I watch a video with people using knives on YouTube, I always see them doing things that I think, oh, watch it mate. You could end up with a hole in your hand or your finger or your leg or something like that. And then some people are just, I swear they're just downright lucky that they've lived as long as they have and haven't injured themselves quite badly. But I get the distinct feeling while I'm sitting here doing this, thinking I'm all safe and sound, someone out there is probably thinking exactly the same. As I do when I watch other people with knives. My wife's first experience with using an axe to chop an axe to chop wood when we were camping not so long ago, probably about six months ago. Actually no, probably a year ago and it would have been last summer I think. She uh, cut a little tiny piece off at the end of her index finger and then turned around and looked at me and said I didn't realise it was that sharp. It's an axe, darling. Of course it's sharp. But you shouldn't be using a cutting tool that isn't sharp. Because it's dangerous. And this hand's not really in, in a state now after holding onto that. that this Coburn's got a really thin handle, so it's really not very good for craft work. It makes your hand ache very quickly. My two knuckles here are a bit quite sore. But that feels a bit better now. So now I can move over to the sandpaper and, and really smooth it out. We're going to start with P120. Okay, keep it away from my keyboard. And what I'm going to do is basically roll the blade backwards and forwards. And that should. Oh, God, this is only two packs. Smooth this out really quite nicely. Give us a nice rounded shape for the handle as well. Even after just a few seconds. That has actually taken it out to almost perfectly, perfectly smooth and round. But obviously, because this is such a harsh grain sandpaper, it's going to do it quick and it's going to leave a lot of score lines. So the camera had stopped at some point. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure what point until I get the video out. A uh, video camera is not something I'm really willing to invest in at this point in time. But, we'll continue on, and we're sanding the rough edge and making it smooth. Maybe we should just persevere with this sanding block thing.
keep the tang sticking out the back because it makes a nice hammer. It's a good emergency for breaking glass and knocking panel pins in and the like. I guess none of you actually heard me fucking accents yet, have you? New York's your one. Irish, Welsh, all manner. Spent too much time wandering around this country. Picked up just about everybody's accents. The only way I'm not very, never really been able to get is uh, Cornish. The wee Scottish. Scottish accent's really easy. And the Welsh one. Well, he, boy, oh, all the Welsh, they come from Cardiff. I'll give it one last blast over. I actually cover my keyboard in and paper anyway. Oh, dust, wood dust. I've got some beeswax in the cupboard. And I'll just give that a rub in quickly. Because that will stop me from leaving my uh, dirty fingerprints all over it. Hopefully it will anyway. I don't really know how to how you're supposed to uh, apply beeswax to the A lot of experience with um, God damn it. a lot of experience with wax finishes on metal. Wax finishes on metal really do look nice. Oops. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Use it on my bowstrings. People say you shouldn't use beeswax on your bowstrings, but we'll see what it does to this piece of wood, eh? You shouldn't use beeswax. So yeah, I press quite hard, and what you can feel is very quickly the wax actually starts to melt. It starts to move smoothly. And the other thing I like about beeswax is it smells well. Basically, hopefully relying on the friction. To add that to uh, at least partial amount of wax in, and then once we've done that, then we'll try and apply some heat to it somehow. But realistically, it's got to be non-sooty heat. to work this in all the way around. My dad used to keep bees, believe it or not. So I'm one of them abnormal people that doesn't get freaked out by bees buzzing around my head. So I'll tell you what we'll do with this. We'll retire to the kitchen. Excuse the cooker, it's filthy. I've been washed for a couple of days. Right, so I've worked the wax in everywhere I can. Uh, push it in there. The ends. Now I want to apply heat to it, not flame heat. So we'll hold it quite high. Right. 
and you can see the wax is actually melting. Then I'm going to burn my finger. An old roofer's trick. When you burn your finger with a tile or pitch that you're using on the roof, don't hop around like a loony. Dip it in a puddle. Or spit on it. Well, that's that part done. A semi decent coating of wax on it. Whether or not you'll actually be able to see it. So I just have to see the camera back out again. Whether or not you'll actually be able to see it, I don't know. It certainly looks shiny, so the next step is to give it a good old buffing up with a piece of cotton cloth. It just so happens. I'm wearing a piece of cotton cloth. It's a piece of white cotton cloth, but look at it. And we'll give it a good polish all the way around. It's not shining as much as I thought it would, but it is shining. Um, the waxing stage, I could, should probably do that three or four times. Or even put the pins in and soak this overnight. Melt the wax, drop this in, let it soak. And then uh, melt the wax again the next day. Oh my, it's a guest. Seriously, someone asked me like that, I'd run. Sounds like she's gonna eat you. Cook you up in a pot and eat you. But you get the idea, it's not difficult to scale a knife. This is probably taking about three hours. All I've got to do now is bang the pins in, paint them over carefully. I don't know whether I've damaged the blade while I was doing this. Like I said, this is a cheap blade, it's cheap wood. I didn't really expect it to come out particularly well. I was hoping that the masking tape wouldn't leave residue behind, like uh, a lot of tapes do. But it seems to have maybe left a bit. Yeah, the tape's left a bit of a residue, not a lot. Again, okay, I don't know where you can see it. So I'll just go and grab some myths. This is a meth, sorry, this is uh, medicinal alcohol, rubbing alcohol. We've got to give the blade a clean. Now obviously we're doing this with the bare blade, so one has to be careful. This is a sharp piece of metal. Very sharp. I 
and uh, more importantly, it's sharp on both sides. And uh, this alcohol is currently burning its way into that cut on my thumb. That's rather uncomfortable. Oh my. oh my, the guest. By the way, this Skyrim sitting there. Do, 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 do. It's been sitting there the whole time I've been doing this part of the video. But, you get the idea. This camera's battery's just about to die. We'll see how close we can get it and still keep it in focus. There, very simple, very easily done set of scales with nothing more than a bit of crap wood that I picked up from a broken wardrobe, a blank. I think it was 16 quid blade, $20, brought in from America. Some two pack glue, which was five quid off of eBay. Sorry, no, it was five quid from our local hardware store. And I've got some big brass nails that I need to cut and put in there. Um, I'll probably do that tomorrow. Thanks for taking the time to watch, guys. I hope you learned something from this. It's not as difficult as you might think, even if that was hardwood. It still take it, the hardwood just takes a little bit more time to work with. The same as uh, that antler. The antler is much harder than hardwood, so it will just take more time to work with. Thanks for watching. See ya.